Hi, I'm State Representative Rafael Anchi of Dallas, and I'm the chair of the bipartisan Mexican American Legislative Caucus of the Texas House, or MALC, as it's more commonly known. MALC is the oldest and largest Latino caucus in the United States and works to represent the interests of all Texas Latinos. We just witnessed one of the most important American traditions, the successful transition of power from one president to the next. And now that the 85th legislative session has begun, the eyes of Texas are upon us. On this eve of Governor Abbott's State of the State Address, I'd like to start by wishing the governor well this session. I would also express the desire of Texas Latinos for steady and consequential leadership at the state level. During these uncertain times, MALC members are committed to working with the governor on bipartisan solutions to ensure that the future of Texas is one in which everyone has a chance and opportunity to succeed. As former Texas State Demographer and U.S. Census Bureau Chief Steve Murdoch reminds us, Texas will succeed only if Texas Latinos succeed. Our futures are linked, and too often politicians engage in short-term thinking, only focusing on the next election. However, the Latino community in Texas is young and needs a long-term vision from its elected leaders. We need leaders who will pay forward the same type of investment that was made in them. And Malk asks the governor, and fellow state leaders to join us in building a promising future for our state. The Latino agenda? Well, it's pretty simple. We need good paying jobs, we need quality public education, we need to take care of our veterans, and we need healthy communities. Texas' economy has been strong since the recession, but a number of factors, including recent oil and gas slumps, have caused our economy to fall to 21st in the nation. To make matters worse, during his first week on the job, the new president has vowed to build a border wall by imposing a 20% tax on Texas-Mexico trade. The Texas Association of Business has warned that these policies threaten countless Texas jobs that are tied to the bilateral relationship, which accounts for about 15% of Texas's GDP. To be clear, Texas Latinos and the Texas economy are under attack. With over 3 million Texas jobs tied to international trade, we need active and muscular leadership to protect Texas jobs and educate the president that our border with Mexico is an opportunity and not a challenge. Texas also needs a long-term jobs plan that advances low-wage workers into higher paying jobs. A recent Federal Reserve Bank report indicates that the share of low-wage jobs in Texas has grown at twice the rate of high-wage jobs. This means that people looking for work are more likely to find a low-wage position that doesn't pay enough to help them make ends meet and take care of their families. After having enjoyed strong job growth under Governor Perry, Latinos are looking to Governor Abbott for a jobs plan to reverse the trend of the last few years. Next, Texas needs to do more to ensure students are prepared for a 21st century job market. Currently, Latino children make up 52% of enrollment in schools across our state, but they also make up the largest ethnic group that ultimately does not complete high school. As we continue closing the achievement gap, we must first take care of our underfunded public schools. The Supreme Court has said that our school finance system meets minimal constitutional requirements, but Texas Latinos need to be more than adequate. They need to be globally competitive, and they need to be the workforce of the future that will help Texas thrive. In addition to listening for a school finance fix tomorrow, we also are interested in your vision for ensuring that Texans have access to an affordable college education. Of particular concern are dreamers who have been able to continue their education through laws like the Texas Dream Act or deferred action for childhood arrivals. And they're in college, or they're working as nurses, police officers, teachers, and they're making our community better. We can't pull the rug out from under them. We hope that the governor will not pursue policies that will hurt their contributions to the Texas economy. And we ask him for leadership in creating a system that makes our young people highly educated and globally competitive. Next, we're increasingly concerned with the legislature's willingness to compromise on issues that concern our veterans. Last session, the legislature tried to repeal parts of the promise that we made to veterans and their families. Unfortunately, the fight to repeal the Hazelwood Act continues this session. Texas has a very high percentage of Latino veterans and MALC members represent military towns all over this state. If we could find $800 million for DPS and possibly spend $20 billion on a border wall, 
then we can surely find the money to reimburse our universities for the promises we made to our veterans. When we shortchange our veterans, we turn our back on the values that made us proud to be Texans. A belief in honor, duty, and shared sacrifice. There are a number of pressing health issues facing the Latino community that we urge the governor to take immediate action on. First, we ask him to make CPS an emergency item. The CPS crisis affects over 46,000 Texas children, 19,000 of whom are Latinos. Our next priority concerns the 2.3 million non-elderly Latinos living without insurance in Texas. This is the highest rate of uninsured in the nation. This means that 56% of all Texas Latinos do not have access to affordable, preventative, prenatal and life-saving care. And without a replacement plan for the Affordable Care Act, the one million or so Texans who gain coverage under the law are also at risk of losing care. This is especially alarming given the high rates of childhood obesity, heart disease, and diabetes that our community faces. As the fights grow over bills that do little to move our state forward, our health care system remains chronically underfunded and underperforming. And when we stop caring for our young and for our sick, we make a mockery of the belief that every person has a basic right to a healthy life. This is a call to action and a reminder that the future of Texas depends largely on the success or the failure of the Latino community. As chair of the Mexican American Legislative Caucus, I speak for all members in saying that we look forward to working with Governor Abbott this session, as together we hope to find solutions to the challenges facing us. Solutions that will ultimately be good, not only for Texas Latinos, but for all Texans. Thank you, God bless you, and may God bless Texas.